Hello people, in this video we want to look at the theories of color vision <coughs> or color sense. Okay, So let us learn everything about uh, color vision. So basically how is it that we are able to perceive colors, right? So what is color? Uh, color vision, the ability of a person to identify different colors, right? This is light adapted vision, okay? So basically you can see different wavelengths of light. So what do we need color vision for? So uh, definitely people can live without it, but it just makes life better. And in terms of some occupations like drivers, pilots, etc., they need to know which color light is there so that they need to know whether it is time to stop or go. So anything that is red reflects red light, right? And anything that is green reflects green. So that's what you should understand here. So that is the wavelength. Okay. So in our eye, we have rods and cones in the retina. Okay. So in the retina, when you look at it, there are two types of cells, rods and cones. So basically the cones are the ones that we are interested in. The cones are the ones that are going to help in perceiving the color. So we have three types of cones. We have blue cones, red cones and green cones, which will help us perceive the colors. So primary colors are what? Red, green and blue. So this is nothing but photopic vision. Okay, you should remember this word. What is it? Photopic vision. <coughs> photopic vision. So how is it going guys? Today we are looking at what? Color vision. Say color. Color. Vision. Vision. Okay, so what did we see? Photopic vision. That is the one with colors. Now what are the rods doing? So in the retina you saw that there are rods also. What are they doing? They will help us see in dim light. So that is called a scotopic vision. But here what are we to re, uh, what have we come to read? We have come to read only photopic vision given to us by the cones. So now let us look at the theories of color vision. We have the trichromatic theory or the, it's also called as the young Helmholtz theory. Very important. <clears throat> and the other theory is opponent color theory of herring. Okay, so opponent color theory of herring, we will take up this later. First we will understand the trichromatic theory let us understand okay so trichromatic theory was given by whom by young Helmholtz okay so these two people so what have they said there are three kinds of cones right and uh, what are the three cones the primary cones three types of primary cones we have that is the red blue and green cones and each of these will have some pigment so let us look at them So you have the red, blue, so red, green and blue. Always put it as red, green and blue. Okay. So red will have what? Okay. Red cones will have red cone sensitive pigment that is called as erythrolabe. Okay. Then green is chlorolabe. You can remember by chlorophyll green. Blue is cyanolabe. Okay. Cyanolabe. What are these? These are the pigments. Okay, mainly these are the ones. Okay, then what else? Look at the wavelength here. Red is at 565 nanometer, right? So red is at what? 565 nanometer wavelength. Green is at what? Green is at 535 nanometer and blue is at 440 nanometer. So this much you have to write in the exam, okay, 440 nanometer. This much you will have to write, remember, okay, 565, 535 and 440, 565, around 565 for red, you remember, okay, 535 is for green. Okay, they have also mentioned that these are the primary, <clears throat> but there are cones which are, um, which have maximal sensitivity in the yellow portion of the spectrum. So there are some other cones also. So, now let us move on then. So, you have understood the trichromatic theory or the young Helmholtz theory. Okay. So, there is another uh, theory called opponent color theory of herring. Basically, here what he is telling is, uh, he is saying that the colors are mutually exclusive. There is nothing called as reddish green, etc. That is difficult to explain in terms of trichromatic theory, something like reddish green. Okay. So, they are putting both the theories together to explain color vision. 
So just remember that what Herring said is that there is nothing like reddish green. The colors are mutually exclusive. So color vision at the level of this uh, photoreceptors is uh, trichromatic. Further on in the ganglions, right, in the ganglions, that is where all this mixing happens, okay. So at this level it can be red, blue or red, green or blue, but that mixing ha happens in the ganglion cells. So there are this color opponency, so that remember that word opponency, that color opponency happens in the ganglion cells, okay, all the nerves. So you can remember in the ganglion cells all those mixing color opponency happens, red, green opponent colors, blue, yellow opponent colors, okay. So basically they just put uh, both of these theories together. What are the two theories? Trichromatic theory at the cones and the opponent color, right? Opponency is the spelling correct? So the opponency is happening at the ganglion cells, okay. So let's move on guys. Let's see what is there forward in this. What is the cause of color blindness or color deficiency? It's not blindness, it's color deficiency. So basically, uh, the red and green perception is there on the X gene, okay? That is the sex linked uh, gene, right? So basically, red and green deficiency, if it is there, it could be mostly X linked, okay? So lo look at this X linked recessive trait. So basically, father is affected, he has only one X chromosome, and mother has two X chromosomes. So um, the likelihood of a female being affected by color blindness is lower, right? She could be a carrier though. So now let us say if a father is affected, right? So this chromosome will go to whom? The X will definitely go to the daughter. The daughter will become a carrier, okay? So this kind of a, a crisscross kind of an inheritance from father to daughter, mother to son, right? The X chromosome, the way it goes. So here you can see mostly the males are affected and females become carriers. So it is crisscross inheritance. So red green, where are they sitting on the X linked chromosome? So this is uh, sex linked chromosome. Okay, blue is autosomal inheritance. So basically, not just the genetic, there could be other causes. The other causes will be like uh, systemic uh, diseases, like diabetes, etc. Medications, some medications people are taking, chemicals, or definitely aging. Okay. So that all these can lead to color deficiency. So let us look at the types of uh, color deficiency. Before that, just let's go back here. Here they are saying <clears throat> red pigment is also called forfiropsin. Forfiropsin and green is called what? Iodopsin. Iodopsin, right? And blue, they are also calling it as cyanopsin. Cyanopsin. Okay. So it kind of makes sense, right? For fire, red, iod, iod, that is green. Okay. Cyan, cyan, same thing. Okay. So now let us go to types, right? We have to go to the types of color deficiency. So if a person cannot see red, it is called protanopia. If the person cannot see green, it's deuteranopia. It's like Slight deficiency, not completely, they can't see, not like that. A red deficiency, protanopia, green deficiency, deuteranopia, and blue deficiency, tritanopia. Tree is more like three, right? Mostly people cannot see red and green, guys. Genetic uh, inheritance here is more common. Now look at this other type of color blindness, another type classification. Monochromats, they have only one type of cone. Monochromats have only one type of cone. Oh. And dichromats have two types of cones. Okay, so if they have two types of cones, that dichromats have two types of cones, that means only one can be deficient. So, protanopia, red color deficiency, deuteranopia, green color deficiency. So, all these three types are coming under dichromats because they have the other two are perfect. Trichromats, all three types of cones are, are there. Monochromats, they have only one type of cone, but that condition is rare. rare. You remember what all this, what you saw now are dichromats. That means Two are fine, two types of cones are fine, one type of cone has problem. And uh, in protanopia, what is the pro what the problem is? Red deficiency. Color deficiency, how will you test? Diagnosis. So basically, you have Ishihara's chart. These are very famous. You can see, you can read these numbers and uh, within how many seconds the person reads, etc. And how many they can read. Sometimes they are not supposed to read these numbers and they land up reading. Sometimes they have to trace the pattern from here to here. So a lot of tests are there. In Ishihara's chart, you can look at these, okay. There are a lot of other tests like Helm-Hollem-Gren-Wool test. 
look at these colored wools okay he has to match the sample okay holm grain wool test then we have we told you the ishihara's chart this is pseudo isochromatic test that's what they also call it as pseudo isochromatic test that is the book okay page by page the person will have to tell the number design etc on it then this is edridged green lantern this is another test to check the color vision so this is usually used for drivers then you have the spectroscopic test in this there will be a spectrum so the person will have to <clears throat> identify the color in the spectrum holmgren holmgren wool match wool match ishihara chart ishihara chart that is pseudo isochromatic test guys then you have the green lantern test green lantern green lantern then you have the spectroscopic Go okay. Looks like there are more tests. Let's look at the names. Hardy Rand Rittler plates. H R R. It is more sensitive than Ishihara. That is this one. Then they are they are also talking about American optical color plate test. Okay, this is more uh, sensitive than uh, uh, this H R R is more sensitive than the Ishihara chart. Then under the spectroscopic test, they are talking about Farnsworth Munsell hundred hue test. This is the most sensitive. They seem to like it a lot. So basically, the person has to arrange the colored chips in ascending order. That would be really difficult, isn't it? Hundred hue test is the most sensitive. You have to arrange it in some ascending order. Wow! It consists of eighty five caps, <clears throat> not hundred. Wow. Okay. So, Fans worth fifteen, ah, uh, fifteen hue discrimination test is that that where they use only fifteen caps. I think that's enough, really. But anyways, most most sensitive is this one, the hundred hue test. Fans worth, Fans worth Munsell hundred hue test is the most sensitive guys. So this is what it is about the diagnosis. Yes, you should know this one also. Nagel's anamelloscope in which the person as is asked to mix red and green. So what are they mixing? Red and green, and they should make yellow, <clears throat> which matches the yellow colored disc. So the person will have to mix these two colors. Okay, that is a Nagel's anamelloscope. Okay. Now let's move on, guys, to the last slide here. That is, how is the color uh, deficiency treated? There is no cure, but people can be given some tinted glasses. Right, and people learn to live with it. Okay, they learn to organize it in the order, etc. So basically, let's take a recap. We tried to, we wanted to look at the theories of color vision, right? Um, <clears throat> so we looked at the cones. Cones help in photo, photos, photopic vision. Okay, and um, what are the, what is the theory? The tri. trichromatic theory so given by young helmholtz there are three cones red green and blue red will have red pigment that is erythrolab green pigment chlorolab blue pigment cyanolab you have to mention the frequencies 565 535 440 okay then um, there is opponent color theory of herring there is nothing like a reddish green that's what the person is saying okay so the theory is uh, totally added up trichromatic is at the cones then at the ganglions there is color opponency okay so what is the cause of uh, color deficiency basically it is mostly congenital and mostly in males because it is x linked recessive trait so red and green usually are controlled by the genes on the x chromosome so males are affected more this you have to remember and uh, what else it can also be co uh, caused by acquired conditions like damage to macula or optic nerve systemic diseases any medications that is drugs chemicals and also by aging okay so types of color deficiency we saw that there is protanopia deuteranopia and tritanopia and uh, which is more common red green is more common okay a person who has uh, normal vision is called as trichromate because he has all the three cones So we have uh, trichromats means they have um, all the three cones. Normal people will have three all the three cones. 
Color deficiency, how to diagnose? We already saw the wool match test, holm Grand wool match test, pseudo isochromatic test like Ishihara chart, Hardy Rand Rittler plates, that is HRR, it is more sensitive than Ishihara. Then you have the Green Lantern test, spectroscopic test, where you have to remember the most sensitive one is Fra Fans Worth Munsell. Can you say this? Fans Worth Munsell. Farnsworth Munsell 100 hue test. Okay, that's the most sensitive. But actually, it doesn't have 100 caps. It has 85 caps. Then you have the Nagel's Anamaloscope. Okay, that is this one. Where they are asked to mix red-green to give a yellow. Uh, as such, there's no cure, but people learn to live with it. Okay. That's all for now in this video. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.